You ever see IP67 or IPX4 on your earbuds or speaker box and think, cool, whatever that means, uh-huh, yeah. Well, those numbers could actually be the difference between your gear surviving a rainstorm or dying in your gym bag after a workout. Today we're breaking down IP ratings so you'll know exactly how dustproof and waterproof your gear really is and how much protection you actually need. Let's do it. So. IP stands for Ingress Protection. It's a standardized rating system for how well your device can withstand two gear killing elements, dust and water. Now, this rating system isn't just for earbuds and speakers. You'll also see it on other electronics, even weatherproof backpacks and things like camera cases too. It's always two digits. The first is for solids like dirt or sand, and the second for liquids like water or sweat. The higher the numbers, the better the resistance. So let's start with a common one, IPX4 which is a rating that both the AirPods Pro 2 and the Beats Power Beats Pro have. In this case, the X is just a placeholder. It means that dust protection wasn't tested. The four means it can handle water splashes from any direction. Light rain, no problem. Shower, mm, risky. Submerge it, yeah, maybe don't do that. If you're buying earbuds for the gym or longer cardio sessions, maybe you live in a rainy climate and commute often, I recommend at least IPX4. That'll be enough for most people. Now let's go one step up here. The Nothing Ear Open, for example, have an IP55 rating. That's dust resistance five and water resistance five. Translation, some dust protection and the ability to handle stronger water sources, basically more pressure than just rain or sweat. For outdoor speakers, my minimum is IP67, and it's a common one. Again, those numbers are going up, so now the six means it's completely dust tight, no dirt or sand is getting in, and the seven means it can survive being submerged in up to one meter of water for around 30 minutes. Drop it in a pool and fish it out quickly, you're probably fine. A quick note here, when we are talking about water resistance, we are talking about fresh water resistance. Salt water, you're gonna wanna rinse it off right away to avoid corrosion. And while these speakers can survive a dunk in water, it's not meant to perform underwater. You're gonna wanna let it dry out before using it again. We're also seeing IP68 on products like the JBL Charge 6 and the Flip 7. That's still dust proof, but again, a higher number, so it can go deeper into water, about 1.5 meters for the same duration of around 30 minutes. And yes, there is one more level, IP69, nice. Now, you won't see it on earbuds or speakers, at least not yet, but it is real. That rating means a product can handle high pressure and high temperature water jets, like something you'd see in an industrial cleaning from a power washer or something. It's kind of overkill for audio gear right now, but who knows? As rugged use cases grow, we might see future products push into that territory. So here's where it matters. If you're just sitting at your desk, IP ratings don't matter. Gym or rainy commutes, IPX4 or 5 is fine for most people. A speaker for the beach, pools, camping trips, aim for IP67 or better. For me, in Vancouver, BC, basically a rainforest for two thirds of the year, I go IPX4 minimum for commutes, plus IP67 for my beach and camping speakers. Now, just a couple more points to touch on. Just because something is waterproof in a lab test doesn't mean it'll survive every real world situation. IP tests are done with clean water, no movement, no chemicals. So dunking your speaker in a chlorinated pool or a salty ocean, again, that's pushing it. And as I mentioned, you'll wanna rinse it off right away after. And if a product doesn't have an IP rating at all, just assume it's not water resistant. Some companies skip the testing entirely to save money. Doesn't mean it's trash, but I wouldn't take it near a pool or to the beach. Now, piggybacking off that, you might notice that most over-ear headphones don't even have an IP rating. And that's because they're harder to waterproof without affecting the sound thanks to vents and seams in the design. Plus leather and foam pads don't exactly handle moisture well. Since they're not usually worn in heavy rain or workouts, brands skip that extra certification entirely. That said, you'll still see people wearing their AirPods Max to the gym and you know, they'll probably survive an occasional workout, but if they don't, that's on you. Bottom line, don't just trust the word waterproof. Look for that IP rating, know what those numbers mean, and you'll avoid the heartbreak of killing your gear before your next workout or your next camping trip. Of course, there's a variety of these IP combinations, so if you wanna learn more, I do recommend heading over to soundguys.com to read our article on decoding IP ratings. And if you're thinking, hey, I still need a Bluetooth speaker for the beach, you can check out my video on the best Bluetooth speakers of 2025 right here. And they're probably all IP67 or higher. Happy listening.